Hey everyone and welcome to today's Take Heart. Uh, happy Thursday to you. At the start of the week on Sunday, we were looking at the armour of God and we talked about the helmet of salvation and everything that that means to kind of wear the helmet of salvation. And part of the thinking behind that was that we're told in scripture, specifically Ephesians chapter 6, that uh, that we're to put on the full armour of God. So let me just read you Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. It says, Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And it goes on to talk about how our struggle is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, not against flesh and blood. And one of the things that I've always found really interesting about that little statement is the idea that the armour of God is given to us and we are to put it on, we're to wear it. We've been given this equipment, but in a way it's kind of our um, journey in faith and our journey in following Jesus is learning how to use it well. And so I just thought I would just share a few thoughts on the breastplate of righteousness, which Paul tells us to make sure we've got in place. What, is, what does that mean as a piece of equipment, as we journey and battle through everything we're experiencing at the moment? Um, what does it mean to wear the breastplate of righteousness? And I think it's, it's, um, it's really simple, um, but it's just kind of uh, a practice that we've got to repeat again and again and again. And it just means to recognize that our protection from the attack of the enemy upon us, and that, that's an attack that usually kind of results in us feeling ashamed and us feeling guilty and us feeling condemned. Our protection there is just to recognize what the gospel tells us, which is that we're given Jesus's righteousness. It's because of what he's done that we're made right. And that might sound like an obvious thing. Um, it, is, it is the heart of the gospel, but living out from that place is, is really quite tricky, I find. And often, um, during times of stress and struggle, like the one we're in at the moment, our, our, our flaws kind of are exposed. It's not that they weren't there beforehand, it's just that they're more obvious now. So in the way that like, you might have a, a bridge that can take the weight of a car, suddenly if a lorry drives over, all the cracks might begin to show because suddenly they were there already, but suddenly there's a much bigger pressure on them and so they're more obvious. In the same way for us, I don't know if you're finding this, but I'm certainly more aware of my own failings, my own flaws at this time than I, than I have been for quite, quite a long time. Uh, they've always been there, but they're just more exposed. And at a time like this, the devil has a field day because, of course, he is known as the accuser. So when it talks about the devil's schemes, elsewhere in the Bible, one of the things that we know his, his, he gets up to is he accuses us and he likes to point out to us all of our sin. And um, he, he's right, you know, when he points out to me, Andy, you, you've got an issue with pride. Um, you know, what? I've got less of an issue with pride than I used to, but man, have I still got an issue there. When he points out that I might have an issue in a, a different area, you're always doubting God or you're not as passionate as you used to be. And, and, and he puts his fingers just right where he knows he'll kind of... Um, He'll get me, as it were, and he'll really kind of press my buttons. And what it can be tempting to do is to either roll over and just agree with him and say, do you know what, I'm a terrible person. You're absolutely right. Um, or it can be to pretend and live in denial. No, I have no issues and I'm really doing really quite well. And actually, we're, we're to do neither of those things. What we're to do is to get into the breastplate of righteousness, to strap it onto ourselves and to recognize that yes, I do have these, these flaws. Yes, I am weak and I am sinful and I have made mistakes and I'm repeating those mistakes sometimes and I wish I wasn't. But my acceptance to my father hasn't changed at all. It hasn't changed just even a fraction because he accepts me on the basis of the righteousness of Jesus. And uh, I used to think, I remember hearing one guy put it like this, I used to think that Christianity was about constructing your own righteousness, trying to be a good person and so you can present yourself to God. And actually, it, it's about God building a righteousness and then giving it to us. I used to think it was about trying to live a righteous life when actually it's recognising that Jesus has lived a righteous life on our behalf and we just receive that. That might sound quite an abstract thing, but when we get it, what it does is it gives us confidence to come before him. And so think about how we're often trying to make ourselves presentable to people. 
Um, you know, whether it's, and the way we normally do that is we hide our flaws, right? So we'll hide our physical flaws behind filters, we'll hide our personality flaws behind pretending for as long as we can that we're funnier than we are or we're, you know, whatever, like less talkative or more talkative than perhaps we normally are. And, and we'll try and hide our, the things we don't know by pretending we know them and just, at least I do, um, kind of trying to get away with it. So we try and hide our flaws and the goal really is to, to be um, acceptable and, and pleasing, I suppose, to the eyes of whoever it is that we're trying to impress. We can sometimes bring that into our relationship with God. If I can just live up to his standards, he'll accept me. And of course we forget the heart of the gospel is we could never live up to his standards, but he gives us this perfect righteousness, this free righteousness in what he's done. Where that ties into where we are today, the so what of this, is it means that even in the midst of severe strain and even in the midst of pressure and even when all of our, um, our, our sins, our cracks, our selfishness, the character flaws that we have are exposed, we never need to walk away from God. The devil, one of the ways you can recognize his voice is he'll say, look at this sin, you gotta leave God's presence. And the spirit, what he does is he does say, look at this sin, this isn't good, you need to repent of that. But, but actually the, the result of the spirit's voice is, hey, you need to come close to him again, receive his righteousness again. Rather than sitting around beating myself up when I've become even more aware of my own brokenness. What I've been trying to do is put that breastplate of righteousness on, recognize I stand with confidence in the presence of my God because of what he's given me, and then ask him to help me work on the stuff I need his help with. The breastplate of righteousness is our protection against the accusations of Satan.